One of the biggest changes the Pelicans could make this offseason is moving Brandon Ingram, but I'm going to tell you why his contract situation might mean they sign him to an extension right away instead. It's another episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this. This show is coming out on Saturday. This is the Friday show. Jazz Fest, the Rolling Stones got a little bit of the best of me. So this show is coming to you a little bit late. We'll have another show for you probably Monday, uh, the show for Monday, but it'll be coming out like Sunday afternoon on YouTube. So we're back to the normal schedule here. But I wanted to get this one done. And I was telling you I was going to do this show. And we're going to look at Brandon Ingram's trade value in relation to his contract, because I think that's a really important thing. David Griffin said big changes are coming. But does that mean Ingram was going to be traded, particularly after a bit of a rough season and a very rough playoff run? I'm not so sure, and the contract is the reason why. By the way, today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. we got to talk more about Monopoly Go, this fast-paced game that lets you team up with friends for tournaments to, to unlock awesome prizes, unique stickers for trading, cool playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. So download Monopoly Go now free on the Google Play or App Store. Go play Monopoly Go because it's awesome. Okay, so... And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want and putting it in the proper context too. That's always an important thing and we're going to do that in today's show. So let's dive into it with Brandon Ingram here. David Griffin said big changes. I don't know if that means big changes to the big three right now of Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, and CJ McCollum. CJ is of the guys that you would trade probably like the the third most likely just because I think his value around the league on the contract I think he's more valuable to New Orleans than he is to other teams so Brandon Ingram particularly after him admitting that this was the worst season he's had had an atrocious playoffs and there are some serious questions about his fit with Zion Williamson seems to be the guy that you would want to look to move on from and there's going to be some things we're going to talk about in Monday's show when I look at the offense and what went wrong this season with it, that it's going to maybe want you uh, want that's going to maybe make you feel you want him traded even more. So we'll get into that coming up on Monday. But Ingram's contract makes this tricky right now. So now that the season is over, he more or less has one year. He has one year left on his deal as of June one, when the league New Year shifts. He has one year left on his deal. Guys that are on an expiring contract, one year left tend to have lower trade value than other players. This is a problem in this. When you look at Ingram's value to people around the league, I don't think you're going to get, as of it right now, the best return on investment. And for a small market team that's trying to manage their assets, this is not a free agent destination or anything like that, nor do they have money to spend in free agency. You can't just trade a guy for pennies on the dollar. You need to absolutely consider the contract value and the return that you're getting. If it's not as close to -to one-to-one for your player, you're not going to be able to really make that deal because it's just going to set you back further in the And that's not something the Pelicans want to do here. So because he has one year left on his deal, he's essentially a rental for any team looking to trade for him. We saw this a little bit with Anthony Davis in his trade request. Well, he only had one year left on his deal. So anyone trading for him was only going to be able to get him for one year and then he could leave. So you don't give up a ton of picks, a ton of young players or anything like that in return for him. And that's a big part of the problem here. Ingram is going to tell every single other team that he would be traded to right now that I will not sign an extension and I'm going to go through free agency and that's going to scare teams off. That's going to mean your offers are lower than what they would be. That's also on top of him just having the worst playoff series that he could have probably had. 
no show, having a really weird year, starting, as he said, with Team USA, where he really struggled to fit in like that. This is a very talented player here who's committed on the defensive side of the ball in a way that we never saw from him before, but he derailed the Pelicans offense at times. More on that in Monday's show. And I don't know if just his on-court play is going to be one of the things that really makes teams want to give up a ton for him. You know, I was I went on our Locked On Pistons show with Kuka Hill, who's an awesome host, and we talked about a Brandon Ingram trade potentially. You could the the Pistons pick this draft is guaranteed to be in the top five. They also have Jalen Duran, who's I think a very good young center that would fit next to Zion Williamson. You could maybe get a trade done around Ingram and Duran for. Uh, Ingram in the Pelicans 21st overall pick as long as that Detroit pick isn't number one I think you could get that in a deal but keep in mind this is one of the worst drafts we've ever seen this is largely considered to be the worst draft in a very long time we'll do a show on will the Pelicans take the Lakers pick or not but the short answer of it as of right now is no of course not you'd rather have it be further back in next year's draft like this 21st overall pick that the Pelicans have might be considered like um, you know, a second round pick in this, you know, in next year's draft, something like that. That's how bad this really is. So this draft is not good. So you could trade Ingram for, say, the fourth pick, fifth pick, and Jalen Duran. Would you do that for the Pelicans in 21? I don't think that's an, inc- it, look, that's a doable deal. And that's one that New Orleans should actually consider. But that isn't necessarily like a sexy deal. Right, That's not Trey Young, that's not DeJounte Murray, that's not Larry Markin and guys that we will all look at here on Locked On Pelicans. So Ingram's value being low right now because he's an expiring deal, because he's going to tell Detroit, going to tell everybody, no, I'm not going to sign an extension. Like you can, We can figure this out in free agency in a year. And I'll choose where I want to go and where I want to play. Maybe it'll be here. That's going to mean your trade value is low low. And that means that in any Ingram deal, you're going to need to include probably a lot of picks to go and get that type of player. And I don't know if that's necessarily the route that New Orleans wants to go because they need to manage their assets. The war chest from the Anthony Davis trade, the Drew Holiday trades are starting to dwindle, right? Those picks from Milwaukee don't look particularly great right now, even if they kind of actually swapped one this year, but they're still going to be in the twenties or lower. That's not the best spot to be in. They're still first round picks. That's valuable. But the Lakers stuff didn't work out with LeBron staying there, you know, unless he opts out and leaves after this season. And then their one more pick that they get from them either this year or next year looks more valuable, but they want to, the Pelicans want to manage their assets better. And Ingram being on a one year deal makes that really tough. So if his value is, if Brandon Ingram's value is the lowest it's ever been, here's a weird idea. I think you might see the Pelicans extend Brandon Ingram and extend him right away for a lot of money. And I'll tell you why that actually might be the smart move, especially the part about getting it done immediately. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about Monopoly Go because, look, I know we've been talking a lot about Monopoly Go here, but there's just so much good stuff to talk about in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win, the more awesome prizes you unlock, and there's so much to get. There's unique stickers you can trade with friends for big new prizes, cool new playing pieces to travel the board with. I use the car. Emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges, and a ton include their own unique mini games so you're having even more fun by playing other things and there's always new timed events that help you win big like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies and there's also a new orleans board that you can play on so there's always something fun to discover in monopoly go so get off the bench and go download it now free on google play or the app store and go play monopoly go 
And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are the number one Pelicans podcast coming to you like nobody else is, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. So please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join almost 10 thousand pelicans fans on youtube as well we'll do a little bit of a celebration here when we hit that number because i'm really excited about it so please subscribe and tell a friend about the show no one else comes to y'all like this just kind of telling you how, the, the salary cap stuff is going to be really important we're going to look at that here too um so subscribe so let's let's look at this Ingram's value is the lowest. Like, I really think it's the lowest, and that one year left on his deal really, really harms his trade value. So I think because of that, you're going to see the Pelicans get an extension done with Ingram and extend him for more years. But I also think they're going to do it right away, potentially. And I'm going to explain why, because I think that's the key to this. And this is some things that you might not know when it comes to trading players and rules like that. So the team needs to get a deal done with Ingram right away. And his max extension is four years, $208 million on top of this final year of the deal. So that would put him under team control for five more years. So just on the surface of that, that's important. More team control, more years remaining on your contract means teams trading for him. No, he's not going to be a rental. He can't just bolt in a couple of years. So they up their trade offers to go and get that guy. We saw it with Damian Lillard where he was trying to kind of force a, a, a trade to a, like Miami. And then the Bucks were like, no, we'll, we'll trade for you. It can be a risk because you have three more years on your deal. It's not a big problem for us whatsoever. We'll, we'll move the picks. We'll move Drew Holiday in a deal like that. Even if you want to be some Somewhere else, it doesn't matter because you can't just go there in a year. So having those extra years on a contract really makes teams feel safe in terms of trading for a guy. And I think that's one of the big things here with Brandon Ingram. You extend him and immediately his trade value goes up because of extra years left on the deal. That $208 million might seem like, wait, what? That's an average value of over $50 million per year. That's going to be the norm in the NBA. We just need to get used to those numbers. There's going to be guys making high 60s, low 70s per year in terms of millions of dollars in the NBA. The salary cap, the the more money comes into the league, the salary cap goes up essentially. That's how it's going to go. And it means there's more money for players with what they're capable of earning. So we just have to get used to that. The other thing when it comes to that being a large amount is you're a small market. You've got to overpay. I talked about this when I went on the Detroit Pistons show, Locked On Pistons. And give that a listen. There's a lot in terms of like team building philosophy and things like that. You know, they're a bad team. If they want talent on that team, they're going to have to overpay it. So if they want Brandon Ingram, they're going to have to give him a max. New Orleans wants to retain talent like that. And he is a talented player. He's just 26, right? This is a guy who's still right, like almost just entering his prime as a player. You're going to have to pay. It's really as simple as that. And when you look at guys that can score like this, even if their shot selection at times leaves a lot to be desired, they get paid. Former second overall pick, very young, can be a bucket getter. Some team will pay that guy. So it may as well be the Pelicans. And I can tell you right now, while they might try and negotiate a smaller deal, Brandon Ingram is going to want a max. And if the Pelicans don't offer him a max, I'm not sure that he's going to even entertain having extension talks and things just might get shut down. It really might be as simple as that. So all of those factors mean, yeah, $208 million, even if you don't love that, is probably the re reality of a situation here. And that's what we've got to kind of look at with it. So here's the part, though, about getting a deal done right away. Should you explore trade opportunities, things like that? And if that doesn't work, then extend him. No, you shouldn't. Because I do think he will get traded eventually. And I just don't think it'll be right at this off season. So there's a date I want you to keep an eye on, and that is February 15th of 2025. And that's All-Star Weekend. That's the start of All-Star Weekend in, in the NBA next season. The trade deadline's usually about a week before it. We don't have the official date for that yet, but let's call it February 7th or so is the NBA's trade deadline. Here's the thing about that. I could see Ingram being moved at the trade deadline next year. You sign him to an extension. It doesn't work out. You move him at the trade deadline where he's got more team control and a team like Detroit would still probably take a flyer on him. A lot of other teams probably would. And maybe he's played better basketball then and that ups his trade value. To do that, though, you need to sign him to an extension right away. 
Once you sign him to an extension, he cannot be traded for six months. So this is one of those things where when free agency starts and you can start having these conversations right around July 1, you need to do that immediately. You need to sign him to an extension immediately so that you can trade him by the trade deadline. Otherwise, if you wait until August to get an extension done or an extension done right before the season starts, that six-month rule goes beyond the trade deadline and you're stuck with him for the whole year and you can't move him till the next off season. So they need to get a deal done right away if they want to have all those extra years on there and still retain the ability to trade him at the NBA's trade deadline next year. Guess what that means? You want him to take an extension right away? You're, you don't have time to negotiate, right? It means you got to give him the max. It means you have to give him the max. So if you give him a max, if you offer him that max extension, four years, $208 million, right when free agency starts, the first second you can do that, he probably goes, yes, I will sign that. And then you can trade him later. And I think that's ultimately what you might see the Pelicans do here. And it makes sense. Preserve your asset, go into the season with a little bit more continuity than you were thinking. And they need to make changes and they will make other changes more on that in a minute in the next segment here. But I don't see Brandon Ingram as of right now taking less money. So if he's going to get a max, you may as well offer him the max and then trade him later. And you'd be able to do that. And so that's why instead of trading him right now this offseason, you might see him get a max deal instead. And if you do that, it doesn't mean that the Pelicans view him as a core piece going forward, that they want to build around him and Zion. I think there's a lot of questions about the fit there. What we're going to talk about in Monday's show is going to probably make you think otherwise, too, about keeping him. But it's about asset preservation and retaining that guy so that you can get the most trade value for him possible. Yeah, you can get Jalen Duran and the fourth pick. But what if you can get some more stuff in there, too? Wouldn't that be a good thing? And I think that's something that the Pelicans really are factoring in when it comes to what they want to do next and kind of plotting the course. I think they still don't exactly know the full direction they need to go in. They just know they need to go in a different direction and that this season was disappointing because of all of that, right? Instead of it being just a collection of talent winning games, which we'll get into next week too, we're going to look at head coach Willie Green and kind of his situation and how he looked this year. So... All of that's going to be something that this team needs to figure out. What's the direction? How do we get there? And then kind of almost work backwards from that. I think part of it's going to be extending Brandon Ingram. Might not. They might just all of a sudden make a knee-jerk move and move him. That wouldn't be the worst thing. But I think getting the best possible return, depending on what that could be, is an important thing. Look, is, is, is Atlanta going to want to trade Trey Young for Brandon Ingram if, they think Ingram might bolt in a year and that then makes you bad and all of a sudden has you fully rebuilding as opposed to just retooling and trying to be competitive. Like that's a factor into that, I think. I'm looking at Trey Young and Murray's contracts right now. Let me pull these up and see because I'm curious. Yeah, Trey Young's under contract through 2027. You don't just move that guy for a guy that might bolt in a year. They're not looking for cap space. Same thing for Murray. He's under through at least 2027. So if you're going to move one of those guys, you better do it for a guy that also has trade um, a contract that long. So extending Ingram and then maybe making a deal at the NBA's trade deadline for one of those two guys is an important thing, I think. That's how you're going to get one of those guys without giving up other first-round picks. If you do that, then you can also use those other first-round picks for trades and improve your roster all around. And I think that's a really important thing for New Orleans as well. Mass, um, managing your assets when it comes to it. Let me know. Do you agree? Do you disagree in the comments down below of extend Ingram, then trade him by the trade deadline? Or is it you want him gone now? Or do you want to wait till you listen to Monday's show and what we're going to talk about that? So coming up next... Other changes, but still kind of around Brandon Ingram, too. And I want to look at that Detroit deal a little bit more in that. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. 
Oh, my favorite eBay Motors because I use them all the time. Passion, drive, patience. The winning formula for championships is also what keeps your vehicle alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performances. Do you want power, speed, style? They have superchargers, make it go faster. Exhaust kits, make it sound louder. Or just that part that's breaking that you need to replace to keep your vehicle moving? so that you can get to your job, so you can go see your friends, you don't have a vehicle, you're stuck, right? eBay Motors is gonna make it easy for you. I have a couple of cars, I work on all of my cars, including one that's almost 50 years old, and I get all of my parts from eBay Motors because for they have over 122 million parts for your vehicle. So you're always gonna find exactly what you're looking for, and with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time, or your money back. And speaking of money, their prices are good. I shop around a good bit, and I get pretty much all of my parts from eBay Motors because they're the cheapest. So you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home a big win. Keep your vehicle alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only. Available to U.S. customers. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this team. And we got big plans for the offseason. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll look at the offense coming up. It'll The show will drop Sunday night on YouTube. It'll be out there Monday morning for you podcast listeners. We'll get into Willie Green. We'll get into some player reviews, look at them by positions, things like that. Certain guys need to be highlighted a little bit more than others. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot to talk about. We'll do trade targets. We'll still do live shows. Let me know if you want those Thursdays. We were doing them at 6 p.m. over the off season or Sunday, a better night to do them. Whatever y'all want, we'll be able to do here. So please subscribe and tell a friend about the show as well. Join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube. So big changes are supposed to be coming. I think there, this team is a little bit limited with what they want to do. And I think the Ingram contracts are really big factor into that. And you have to factor the contract in the asset management needs to be factored in. I want to take you back two years. This is me kind of giving you my credentials on something here, right? The credential from the seasons right back there. Um, It was two years ago, not this past season, the season before when they still had Jackson Hayes on the team and at the trade deadline, they moved on from Devontae Graham because they were shedding salary. And I said that move was a salary dump, not for that season, but for this coming season, this past one, right? Where they didn't want to pay the luxury tax. And in in fact, made a move trading Kyra Lewis Jr. away to simply duck under the luxury tax, right? That's what they did. That was the one move they made was to duck under the luxury tax because they weren't going to pay it. And we'll talk, we'll do a show on the luxury tax and all of that. And I even said in yesterday's show, or two days ago, they need to pay the luxury tax. It was just on Fox 8 TV down here talking about that as well. If you want to be competitive, you're going to need to pay the luxury tax. Two years ago, when they when they traded Devontae Graham, they also had Jackson Hayes. And people were like, why? It, we knew they weren't going to bring Jackson Hayes back. That was pretty obvious. And so people were like, why didn't they? Well, they're going to trade him. They're going to trade him because you're not going to re-sign him. And I said, no, they're not going to trade him. I said, they're not going to trade him. I think I was the only person basically in Pelicans media saying they won't trade him. The reason was if you make a trade in the NBA, for the most part, not always the case, the salaries need to be almost one-to-one. Jackson Hayes was making $7 million at the time. If you trade him, you're bringing back another $7 million player. If that player has multiple years left on their deal and you weren't going to trade him for an expiring contract because he was one himself, That money would have been on the books next year. So beyond just trading Kyra Lewis Jr., they would have needed to shed another $7 million in salary to get under the luxury tax. So they would have needed to to use more assets to do that. This is the reality of this team and me covering them, right? You know, I think they should pay the luxury tax all the time. They're not going to do that. That's not how it works. So when I talk about this team, it's talking about the reality of the situation, not just playing kind of fantasy basketball, 2K, something like that. This is how they're going to operate, and we need to kind of talk about that in mind. So that's why it's important here to look at Ingram's contract. Should they trade him? Yeah, probably. But also, you've got to make sure you get the most for him and manage those assets and think about the salary cap, think about the team building and assets. And it's not fun, right? It's kind of like we're, we're playing on an Excel spreadsheet here. That's what we're looking at. That's the game. 
That's also a big important part of it, unfortunately, of covering you know the, today's NBA and what it is. So that's why looking at Ingram through the lens of his contract and what it means is really important, especially for what the Pelicans might do so that you have an understanding about that. I would not be shocked if like day one, Brandon Ingram signs a max extension. They're also then probably just going to look to trade him at the trade deadline when you can get a deal done. And hopefully he ups his trade value with his play on the court then. Because I think they know that this current direction they've been going in just doesn't work for whatever reason. Like this team definitely underachieved this year and they had 49 wins. 49 wins is good. Getting there is good. Having the defense they had is good. There was a lot to like too, but for some things just didn't work. And I don't know if those things were fixable per se. It goes back to what I said, if you're in every day or throughout the year, it's if they reach their potential, not when, because it is a question of if, and they didn't. So I think they need to make some big changes. Ingram being one of them, CJ potentially being one of them. But as we've said, or as I've said here on Locked on Pelicans, they're going to kind of go in an order, right? First, they're going to change their starting center. Then maybe they look to make a a, a bigger trade if that doesn't do it. Then maybe you make something with the coaching. Then maybe you move on from Brandon Ingram or Zion Williamson. Or some of those may be in a different order. But it's going to start with the center position. That's going to be the big upgrade this summer, right? Valanciunas isn't coming back. I don't even think Valanciunas wants to come back. So they're going to make big... Those are going to be what they're going to call big changes, right? Now, I think to most people, big changes is Ingram, is Zion, is CJ, and not other guys. But to them, I think it's going to be that group that they put around those three. David Griffin even hinted at that when asked about why the minutes for Zion, CJ, BI just didn't work as well together. He said, maybe it has more to do with the other players that we put around him. That could mean Trey Murphy in the starting lineup. We'll have a show about that and what that would look like. So all of those are what this team is going to need to kind of try and figure out, right? Starting Trey could be considered a big change, I think, in a sense. So it might not just mean that they move Brandon Ingram. So if a deal gets done, if an extension gets done and you see that, we explained it to you here why, especially when it gets done early, right? It's almost their first piece of business. You're going to hear people scream, they're not out signing free agents. They're spending that time extending Brandon Ingram. Well, they're doing both. But also because, yeah, the six-month thing there where if you sign him, you've got to then get that deal done so that you can trade him by the trade deadline and not have to look at it going into next offseason. And I think that's where this Pelicans team is going to be really aggressive, really active. You can say whether or not it's the right strategy. That's fair. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you think they're going to extend Brandon Ingram? Do you not want them to extend Brandon Ingram? Do you think it's good to extend him and then maybe move him later? There is also something called an extend in trade, which that's almost like a sign and trade situation. It's a little bit more complicated. There's potential for something like that as well. But his contract's going to really impact how a deal could get done this offseason and what that would look like. So it might be best to extend him. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. And that's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Pelicans. Sorry for this one being late. This is the Friday show, even though it's coming out on Saturday. We'll be back again on Monday, Sunday night for those who watch on YouTube. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And I'll be back with y'all next time.